You're watching Morning at NTV. Everyday Life is brought to you by Star Times. Enjoy digital life. A very good morning and welcome to this today's edition of Everyday Life. And the discussion earlier was with medical doctors who have, you know, their issues and they want government to do something for them as they ensure that they keep our health, uh, they keep our lives healthy. And on Everyday Life, we shall continue the conversation in a health perspective, this time with officials from the National Drug Authority and they are here to tell us about regulation of drug promotion, uh, be it uh, drugs we, uh, we know traditionally or even those manufactured, you know, like uh, the ordinary drugs that you would find in a pharmacy. And today with me I have Victoria Nambasa, who is the manager of pharmacovigilance that is in the Directorate of Product Safety. Good morning and welcome to Morning at NTV. Good morning. And we have also Michael Mutiaba. He is the manager of traditional and complementary medicines in the Directorate of Product Assessment and Registration. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Good morning, Walter. If we are to start at the point of understanding your mandate, you know, we know that you are, your mandate is to promote and protect public health through effective regulation of human and, drug anim and uh, animal drugs and healthcare products generally in the country. And a few weeks ago, NDA, you know, issued a, a, a warning to anyone who will be selling uh, drugs, especially traditional drugs that are not authorized by the National Drug Authority. And, you know, a couple of issues come up, of course, but what we want to know is uh, what are your issues at stake? Why are you coming out now? Oh. Thank you, Walter. Maybe uh, to uh, put it in perspective, as you mentioned, uh, National Drug Authority's mandate is to promote and protect public health. Mm. And um, among the important activities that we, um, that we do to ensure that the public is protected is the regulation of uh, the information to the consumers. And um, the information is tr critical because um, Drugs are not ordinary goods. Mm. It's not like beans or the TVs or, you know, the chairs. Drugs are special in that the consumers or the patients who take these drugs are not in the position to make their own judgment about the, their health. So it, they really rely on expertise, the health uh, workers. So we have to come in and ensure that the information that is out there is to help them make <coughs> rational use of these drugs. Okay. So that is just to put it in context. And it's really an important aspect that we have to, to deal with to ensure that when somebody claims this drug is, is for this, or for, for maybe treating this disease, it's in a way that is not misleading the consumer. All right. I, yeah. If I'll just... Uh, um, uh, just to add on that, um, as National Drug Authority, what we ensure is to ensure that the population has access to safe, effective, and quality, quality medicines. It's one of our, our vision as National Drug Authority. And through drug promotion, as she mentioned, we want to ensure that, that the information that the public gets, they're able to make the rational uh, decisions on the use <coughs> of the medicines without bias. Okay. So, Mutiaba, uh, your uh, mandate here is to manage traditional and complementary medicines. And these are, uh, I would say, the most medicines out there, you know, that people are selling blindly. And, you know, people are using them and they get side effects according to, you know, some of your issues outlined. They, you have received complaints of people who have used these drugs, you know, every night at a certain location, you know, selected locations in this city. 
you'll find people selling drugs that can heal a thousand and one, you know, illnesses. Just just a single drug like this, including illnesses like cancer, you know. And we know illnesses like cancer have no treatment for now, you know. And that is if it's in later stages. But at that point, how hard have you come out on these people? Um, as NDA, we have been carrying out uh, enforcement activities in regard to these herbal, um, herbal persons carrying out the promotion of, the, of these medicines. But we also want to engage them and teach them what is the proper medicine. So we have a process for screening these medicines such that we require them to come <coughs> and notify their medicines with the NDA, we are able to know what is in these medicines, what are, the, what are the indications, what have they claimed of these medicines. So once they go for promotion of these medicines, after vetting of the, of the promotional adverts, they only promote within the approved claims. We acknowledge that there are those people who are, um, who are advertising on cars, some of them, um, as, as you earlier mentioned that um, we have come out hard on burning. We're also trying to engage the media on how they can assist us as partners to engage these persons advertising these medicines. Yeah. Mm. Does that also account for you know some of these things we see on the media, uh, where they hire someone to come and do something like Jajanid or what Jajanid Dagalarie, you know, <laughs> something like that? Are these also inclusive in in this ban? You know. Do you also take charge of, su of such people? Yes, yes we do. Because as NDA, you are promoting a drug product. And, it, that, and the information that goes out to the public, if you are promoting a product, we need to look at what stage are you. If you come from the home setting and you start commercializing your product, you should, have, should be regulated. So we, we have set in place procedures for notification of these herbal products. And what we are carrying <coughs> out also baseline survey to have an understanding of actually what is on market. So it's going to be a crowd and stick approach, mm. whereby we, we engage you, we train you. And in case you have, um, you're contravening the act, then we carry out the enforcement. Uh, before we go to numbers, I, I would also like you to you know, make us understand the issue of uh, herbs as medication because there are also people who are you know on various TVs talking about how they know you know many things about herbs you know this herb can heal that this herb can heal this do also those people you know do those people also get regulation from you um, what I have to come out clearly is there is the herbal product and this the, there is the herbal practice then the will look at the herbal Product, mm. and in this herbal product, we also collaborate with other government agencies. For example, national chemotherapeutic laboratories, whereby these herbalists, before they submit the products for notification, they have to be screened to to ascertain what is in these herbs before they come to us. So, in regard to <coughs> um, the adverts, there is the practice and the product. NDA. Um, looks at the product, but also, uh, as Victoria will, will highlight, according to the drug promotion um, uh, guidelines and act, the, there are diseases for which promotion is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So if you come on TV and you're talking about a disease or a condition that contravenes the act, then ND also comes. So what are those diseases? You know, a few of them that we could, we should uh, know about. Uh, any disease that you require diagnosis and prescription. Okay. Malaria, mm. HIV, uh, cancer, diabetes, gonorrhea. Diabetes, mm. go gonorrhea. Yeah, we diseases. Yes. Mm. Yeah. All right, Victoria. At at the level of pharmacies, because we see now these drugs uh, move from uh, their makers here, ordinary makers, manufacturers at our homes, and going to the pharmacies. Have you come out to you know, give guidelines to pharmacies on which drug they should take in or which drug they should not take and how they should prescribe it? Um, I think as, as Michael has mentioned, first of all, may, let me clearly state that uh, NDA 
really promotes research and we want to promote the herbalist mm. because even the conventional medicines, what we would call the Western medicines, most of them are derived from the, you know, our from herbs. Yeah, local yeah. Herbs. But you know, the process is is different. That you have to quantify and you know, do a lot of uh, research to come up with a product. And we really want our people, Ugandans, to to work with us, to work with all the agencies involved, to develop products that you can be proud of and promote. So. We are not here against the house, but we want to make sure that these are done, or, you know, are promoted, or you know, are given to our patients, mm -hmm. and you know, in the <coughs> proper way. So when it comes to um, the question you've asked about the pharmacist talking, we have clear guidelines. Pharmacists are sup uh, pharmacies are supposed to only stock or distribute or sell products that we have authorized. So if a herbal product, because there are so many herbal products that we've registered, so you find them in what? In pharmacies. But majority of them are coming from abroad. Some countries have advanced. They, you know, they've gone into a lot of research and they've made really nice products and they've submitted the information which you've reviewed. So you can find them in what? In, in, in pharmacies. But even here locally, we have some some herbalists who have gone ahead, put in, invested a lot in research, and they've developed your products. Like, I would just speak on one product. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not promoting it, but just to help maybe the viewers understand. A product like Kabuti. The, the owner brought it, you know, it has gone some screening. So we have some little information about it and what it can do. So if it's promoted, it's within the context that we can understand and we can be responsible for that. <coughs> so only products that have been authorized, registered, are the ones that are supposed to be um, uh, sold by the pharmacies out there. All right. Yeah. Maybe just to add a little one. Mm. As in order to also to create awareness on um, uh, products that have been authorized, NDA has taken it upon itself to, on our website, to put the products that have been authorized, so mm -hmm. that people get this information. So also, the website has a list of the notified herbal products, those that are made locally. All right. And there are these other companies, you know, from abroad especially, mm -hmm. that also do things alike to those people who sell their uh, local hubs in the night, you know, with loudspeakers put over cars. And these people, uh, also, you know, sell you know, drugs and they say this drug is going to heal this. You know, even ailments that cannot be healed by local hubs, really. And these guys are in town, they have big offices and they're operating. Mm -hmm. I don't know if NDA, you know, knows about those people. I will not mention names, but I'm very sure you've heard about them. They have, you know, they've done stories about them and people have complained, of course, a few people have complained here and there. But for those who don't know, there is what you're talking about here about extortion. Those people are extorting money from an unaware pub, uh, public. Um, yeah, like, like we mentioned, uh, of course, extortion is there, and so many people, you know, have been con. So, so I would say this is criminal, and what we are trying to do is to work with uh, uh, other agencies like police. UCC to to you know to curb this you know vice it's it's basically criminal because it it's uh, it's outside the um, it's against our mandate and the, the, the regulation so we know claims of you know we have a drug that can elongate this these are all extortions and just to inform our pub the public that this is not acceptable and we are trying to work with other agencies like police, uh, UCC, and all other government agencies to ensure that this vice is, you know, okay. it's an, an issue of ens enforcement. Mm. Yeah. You know, from the time you published an advert in the newspapers, I just said to myself that this, pub uh, this ad is just running out, but I know tomorrow or even the next day, mm. I'll watch someone selling these drugs on TV. Mm. Uh, do you, you know, people never understand really if the National Drug Authority is really taking action against these people. Because if you publish an ad warning people not to do this, and then the very next day, the same person is on TV, you know, selling their stuff, we really wonder what's happening. Are those people, you know, 
different from what you people are warning us about or have they qualified? I think these are issues that we need to understand. Um, maybe just to throw, um, as she mentioned, um, NDA is not the only stakeholder. We are trying to partner with other stakeholders. Uh, you mentioned about um, there are those that are actually on the streets, there are those that actually go to the media. So we try to partner with the um, Uganda Communication Commission, uh, Health Monitoring Unit, and um, police. police, and the associations to see how we can have quality products on market and to try to desist. And as you rightly mentioned, there are herbalists who manufacture their products, but they also complain that these herbalists are um, uh, spoiling their profession because of the adverts they make. They're, they're, they're real genuine adver uh, herbalists. So that is also a challenge. It is a twofold, um, a a twofold challenge. You know, if we take this conversation out of the city here and we take it up country, in up country these things are happening more than actually they're happening here because now in the city mm. people are more aware and most of them are alert. So they will probably try to stay away from uh, these other unofficial drugs they do not understand. Even if it's, you know, the medicine that we purchase from abroad or something, if I do not understand it personally, or if I read it, I'll probably try to Google about it and understand. So if I see it has things that, you know, some side effects, I'll not take it. I'll have to go back to the doctor. But then, is this the fight that you're also putting up a country? Because I know those companies that I told you about that have big offices in this city have actually bigger offices uh, up country. Mm -hmm. Is this, you know, a fight that you're only putting up here or, you know, countrywide? What actions have you taken against such people? So, uh, as you mentioned, it's a fight and, and we can't fight alone. We uh, we've, uh, we've tried to do quite a lot through enforcement. Some of these people actually have been probably reprimanded, they've been given warning letters, others have uh, been taken to court. But uh, I would also mention about the, the weaknesses in our laws. Because if we, we need to also strengthen the, the you know the penalties the, the, our, the, our laws, because if I get you and the penalty is so small that it's not deterrent, you are like you can go back and do the same. So like we've said that we, we are trying to work with all the people, the other stakeholders, like the inf uh, enforcement, police, the um, you know judiciary, because uh, if I get you and take you to court. You need to be given the appropriate, you know, uh, you know, punishment. But if it's no deterrent, you'll find yourself doing the same thing. So, up country, we've been there. We've, we've done surveys uh, to get to understand the problem. That's why we are trying to come up with strategies. And um, we realize sometimes it's not about only enforcing, mm. but even giving, you know, empowering the, the people, the community, to understand why it's not appropriate, you know, to use the products, you, you know, from you know you find just this displayed in the market, you know the drugs are, are, are you know deteriorate over time when they are not stored in you know appropriate conditions. So we will deal with the people distributing, but we also want to engage the public to understand why they should also take care of themselves by you know you know thinking through before I go to buy from a person selling on a vehicle. Is the product safe for me? Is it in the right condition? So several strategies. We can't say we are using only one strategy, but we'll, we'll educate the public, we'll, we'll engage <coughs> the, the people in involved, you know, to, you know, uplift. So it's like carrot and stick, and then engage all other uh, stakeholders, the judiciary, and to, you know, review our re regulations to, to make sure that the penalties are, you know, a substantial enough to deter the practices. Maybe so this, uh, oh. Just to highlight, just one moment. Mm. Um, we even gone to the extent of um, engaging the uh, bus owners associations in regard to um, medicine promotion because we received complaints of people who come onto the buses, they promote, then they go off. So, as she mentioned, we we expanding the 
um, the scope of the stakeholder who are stakeholders who are trying to engage, in addition to the aspect of empowering the community. Okay. Now, uh, we are about over 39 million people in this country. And uh, you said you put up information on your website. But if we look at statistics from you, both about about 2 million people use the internet. And that means, you know, the rest of about 30 and more, or 30 plus millions of people will not be able to find this information. What are, you know, the visible signs that someone could, because I see here you say all drugs or herbal drugs should be registered and notified with NDA. But how will I know if I don't know how to use the internet, I don't even have a mobile phone, or, you know, I don't have access to the internet. How will I be able to know? Because the Ministry of Health, you know, has purchased drugs and labeled them UG and say not for sale. So at least they've put up, you know, signs on the drugs. You know, if you find it's a green leaf on a malaria, uh, malaria drug, you know, it's cheaper price or it's actually free. Do we have, you know, such measures in the NDA to actually, you know, tell people who cannot access the internet that this drug is authorized by NDA? Hmm. Uh, maybe I would say there is a, a program um, that we are we we'll soon launch, uh, and this is a simple um, program that we want to uh, to to give out to the public to use. Like it's an SMS, and you know, like you can send uh, and and an, uh, like a simple message just to tickle the system to tell you that this is a registered product or not. So we are trying to make it as simple as possible, probably by beginning of next year. I'm not so sure, but it's something that we are trying out just to help the public to, to you know, verify whether the product I've picked from any pharmacy or from the street is known or registered by NDA. That is, you know, a measure that we are soon launching. But. Uh, Apart from that, we are just encouraging everyone <coughs> to really uh, utilize facilities that have been authorized by India. If you go to a place, a pharmacy or a drug shop, ensure because we, according to our guidelines, the, the owner is supposed to display the certificates and all that to authenticate, to, 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 to show you that, you know, this is a registered facility. So at least there is great assurance that what is the business in that facility, you know, is, 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 is real, is up, you know, mm. approved. So that is one way. So we encourage them only go to premises that have been authorized as we wait on all these other interventions that we try to put on. All right. So, Mr. Mutiara, if you talk about the quality of acceptable adverts, how are these supposed to look like? Let's assume, you know, the person has uh, been certified by NDA. How are the adverts supposed to look like? Um, the adverts are supposed to be not misleading, uh, truthful, and within the indications of the of the product. Okay. Yes. And they should be because adverts are um, actually I would call it promotion. Promotion is targeted to a given uh, population, and when we are vetting uh, the promotional promotional adverts. We look at what population I, I give you this information to. Mm -hmm. If it's to the general public, there is the basic information that they need. But if it's targeted to healthcare professionals, then it's a different set of information. So when we vet, also look at that uh, criteria. And in addition, the, the product you are going to promote should have been either registered or notified with National Drug Authority. OK, and when we talk about extortion, this means that there should be a level at which someone cannot sell their drugs that is, you know, below and above. Is that also your mandate? Um, talk about price? Yes, because you say uh, there is extortion, you know, of course from... Um, the extortion we, we refer to is uh, currently we don't regulate the, uh, the prices on, uh, on the market, mm. but the extortion is... Um, misleading misleading claims for example you have um, just just a basic um, uh, paracetamol you call it paracetamol x 
but on that you say this is the best paracetamol towards all your headaches how should I use it the best those are the kind kind of misleading statements that we don't want on drugs <coughs> okay and then also for you know herbal drugs uh, do you as NDA ever you know carry out like spot checks in in pharmacies because we have you know several pharmacies in this city alone but do you do you move around to see if these people are confirming to the standards that you set um, as I mentioned one is we are trying to give them the information of actually what has been uh, approved then we have um, a department that looks at um, inspection and mm -hmm. enforcement mm -hmm. so as part of their um, licensing or new of licenses they look at what drugs are, are you actually <coughs> stocking in your pharmacy are they approved or not so that is one of the measures and in addition to that uh, more specific to um, to herbal medicine we are in the in the final stages of carrying out um, country countrywide surveys to look at to, to establish a baseline because they can be um, in the pharmacies uh, they can be in the clinics uh, they can be in the herbal clinics they can be in the drug shops to e understand the extent of distribution of these herbal medicine then we have uh, targeted uh, strategies in addition to um, engaging the respective associations of the herbalists you know when we speak about drugs we mean drugs for all of us including animals yes. have you received complaints from you know the veterinary doctors about use of herbal drugs for animals um, mm. we haven't um, I don't have the detailed statistics as of now um, but I know research has been there that herbal, herbal medicine has also been used in the, in, um, in the treating of animals but we don't haven't got any uh, complaints as of now okay all right and if, if we look at uh, the guidelines outlined uh, about the conditions mentioned in the advert should not be part of the fifth schedule in act what does that say what does that mean um, she will expound but it, it um, we have diseases in the act which for which um, promotion is not acceptable so that's those ideas we, we refer to uh, as Ali talked about where you require diagnosis and uh, and prescription so those are diseases in the act mm -hmm. you know these people have also learned because you know just like the older days that uh, since birds have learned how to fly without patching <laughs> you know, hunters have also uh, learned to shoot without aiming these people also hire would say probably quack or maybe their own medical personnel and these people pretend to carry out diagnosis there if you moved around you'd still today find tents you know with loud music playing and telling people how they can cure you know a thousand and ten illnesses but then they also have a section where they can do checks and what is this your mandate also you know to ensure that uh, you also vet you know people who carry out this stuff and i think there is there's a lot more to be done to ensure that we get these people off the street. So I, I don't know if you're also uh, in position to, to ensure that the people who carry out such diagnosis, or even you know, authorized people, do they also present their teams or certified uh, teams to you that you know this is my a doctor and is going to be carrying out diagnosis as we do you know sell our drugs to to the public maybe, maybe uh, just to 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 clarify uh, here I don't um, our mandate you know th there are two 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 issues the issue of um, practice and the issue of, uh, of uh, medicine regulation the product there's a product then the practice i think that's what we started with it's not uh, in a you know it's not in our jurisdiction to you know to regulate uh, the practice i think that's when it comes to herbal product i mean the herbal practice 
that's where now the, the snag is because sometimes the, the the people involved tend to combine both there's a thin line because mm. somebody else is regulating the practice and now nda comes in to regulate the product so that's why we said we we can't do this alone without uh, other agencies that are responsible so the issue of having a doctor diagnosing you know making diagnosis in, in your clinic the, the laboratory set up there is not basically our mandate so it will be like the the medical and dental the associations or the ministry that is responsible for the practice to, to regulate that but you know when i go to a facility where you are stocking all these kinds of products you know when you know at the same time we are practicing it's a it's 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 not easy to, to distinguish. So we tend to, to work with all the agencies. But um, I agree they tend to camouflage and say, you see, me, I'm, I'm practicing, especially the spiritualists. Mm. You know, they can say, well, I'm a spiritualist, and it's through that that I, I have this revelation to give this product. So it's a mixture of practice and now the product. So <coughs> there's need of collaboration if you are to, you know, have this vice. Yeah, but uh, uh, ideally it's uh, against, you know, our law. We are not supposed to, to do both. Yes, so that's why for us we, we normally stick to the product, but the challenge is these products are also stocked in clinics where the practice is done. So that's where we come in. Just to add on what you said, uh, you mentioned about that act we have un the, the, the mandate to look at the safety and quality of your product. But also, as you are promoting, you should not also promote the other diseases. And if you are promoting those diseases, then we also have that mandate to, to regret you. All right. Uh, so, Mr. Mutiava and Victoria, I'll you know, give you a chance to give your last shot as we wind up. Um, my last shot would be to uh, encourage the public to get their medicines from accre accredited, accredited uh, centers, for example, the pharmacies and uh, uh, drug shops. And also, for herbalists out there, we encourage them to bring their products to be notified to ensure that what they give the public is their quality products. No, <coughs> my my. I think my message to the public is to encourage everyone to be responsible for their lives by uh, seeking, you know, um, help or getting the proper information from qualified uh, health workers. We may want to use herbs, but even before you use herbs, please go to your doctor, discuss with your doctor your intention, and you know, so that you get, uh, you know balanced information uh, about your intention to use the herbs. You are not saying they are not useful, but at least try to get, to subs to get you know, the appropriate information so that you can make you know, the, rational, you know, the rational decision whether to use the herb or, or, or not to use it. And, and also, as he mentioned, to at least go to accredited, approved facilities if you are to buy any, any product you want to use. Thank you very much, uh, Victoria Nambasa there. She is the manager, Pharmacovigilance Directorate of Public Safety, Product Safety at the National Drug Authority, and Michael Mutiava. You are the manager of traditional and complementary medicines at the NDA. And, you know, this was it for today. But before we end it here, this is also a call to you out there who's been watching us here, that before you, you know, move over to that car selling that herbal drug, you must understand that just like these other drugs you've not opted to use, this herbal medicine also could have some side effects and also it does expire. So you must be aware that you know you will not take an expired drug which will uh, you know, further give you more complications uh, sometimes which could not even have some cure. That is if it comes to your internal organs like the kidneys and the livers, which do the filtering of whatever we take in. 
That is it from today, uh, for today's Everyday Life. My name is Walter Mwesije. Farida Nakaziwe is already set uh, with Mwasuze Mutia. Have a good morning. Geo Wild and more. All you have to do is renew your monthly basic bouquet subscription of 18,000 shillings. Then enjoy three free days only on Star Times. Enjoy digital life.